Hi, I'm Chris, and in this video I'm going to be going over the uh, the changes that have been made to Adventure Creator's player switching system as part of its 1.71 update. I'm using Unity 2019.3. Up until this point, player switching has been a little bit fiddly to get set up, uh, whereby you had to basically swap player characters with NPCs when you weren't controlling them, but that's all been changed now, and things now work much like you'd expect them to, whereby player characters can act like NPCs when they're not being controlled. Uh, so to demonstrate the new workflow, I have a couple of test scenes already made. Um, these have just been done with Pro Builder, um, and you don't need to set things up exactly like this. This is just, uh, just to demonstrate. So I have this scene A here, which is uh, just a, a simple... L-shaped room, as you can see, with a door that's going to scene B. Um, we've actually got a trigger here, and if I look at its inspector, we've just got a typical scene switch action to take us into scene B. Uh, let's open up that scene now to see what scene B looks like. And it's much the same as scene A, only we have a door on the left. For my player graphics, I'm using the two players um, that come as part of the tutorial files package. Uh, this is a package that's available on the Adventure Creator website. And if you import the whole thing, you'll get this tutorial files folder. And inside that, you have this wharf and then characters folder. And inside that, you have folders for a girl and guy character. Uh, these are actually used by the 2.5D game. And I've just repurposed them to, um, to both be player characters. So for example, I've got this girl character here, and all I've done is converted her into an AC player prefab, um, so she's got a player component, she's being animated with mechanism, and she's using a character controller. And I've done the same to this guy model here, uh, but it should be noted that this technique will work for 2D and 3D, and again this um, is really just a demonstration of the workflow. So going back to scene A, Let's run the scene. We've got the girl character, she's my default player, spawning in the scene. And this is a point and click game, so let's just go through the doorway. And you can see the guy player is here as well. And if I want to switch which player character I'm controlling, I can just go into my inventory uh, and click on the guy icon here. And now I'm controlling the guy. So we can move the guy around, uh, go back to the girl, move her, and we can also go to a different scene, click on the guy there, and we're now switching to the scene where the guy is. So I can then bring them both into this scene A and move them around however I like. Now this technique is not having to use um, associated NPCs. We don't have um, any remember components to sort of remember the NPC position or anything like that. So let's have a look at how this has been set up in the AC game editor. So if I go to my settings manager, um, as always, we've got the character settings uh, panel here and player switching is set to allow. And I've assigned both of these player prefabs in the player fields. You can see our girl is the default player and for any non-default player, we need to tell Adventure Creator where that player is going to start. So beside the Guy player field, I can click on this cog icon and choose Edit Start Data. And this brings up this new Player Start Data window, which I've already filled in. Um, we're setting the start data for the guy. So I've set the scene name to be Scene B. And next we just have to choose which player start he's going to appear. Now I could have him appear at the scene's default, but instead I've defined a specific one that I want him to appear at. And you can see it's recorded that player start's constant ID. The player start field itself actually looks empty, but that's only because we're in a different scene. If we were to go back to scene B, that would then become filled in automatically. And to add the ability to switch between characters at runtime, I've used inventory items. So if I go to the Inventory Manager now, you can see we've got a girl and a guy item. Um, both of these are being carried on start, but by different players. So I have this guy icon, 
which is being carried by the girl, and the girl item is being carried by the guy. And both of these have standard use interactions, which will run when they're clicked on. And if I have a look at, say, girl use, all this is is a single player switch action that will switch to the girl. Um, we've got a few tweaking options underneath the new player field, but to simply switch player, we need only affect this first field. Uh, similarly, for the guy icon, I've got this guy use action list um, that simply changes the new player to guy. And that's now about all you need to get a, um, a basic player switching uh, mechanic going on in your game. But now let's just make things a little bit more complex by working out how we can manipulate those characters when we're not controlling them. So it's quite typical in this kind of game that you're going to want to have control over your inactive player characters, for example, during a cutscene. Um, to demonstrate exactly what I mean by that, um, I'll just go into uh, the scene B here. And if I go back into scene A and walk over to the left here, I've now got the guy character coming through the doorway and walking over here. So let's have a look at how I did that. If I go into the scene window, you can see I've now got this guy enter scene trigger, and this triggers whenever the player leaves it. So you can see I've got the trigger type set to on exit, and this is a background process, so I've set it when running to run in background. Let's have a look at the actions now. I'll just open up the editor here, and you can see that we're beginning this action list by checking three things. We're first checking which player we are, so we're working out are we currently the girl, and then we check the player's previous scene. So we check that the active player's previous scene was named scene B. And then we're checking the current scene of the guy player. So you can see we have the player field set to guy. We're checking his current scene is equal to scene B. And then if all of those conditions are met, we teleport the player and then move him. We can teleport any inactive player with the player teleport inactive action. We're teleporting the guy to the current scene and we can then set a player start. And I've set this to based on previous so that he'll appear at the doorway, which is where our player start from scene B is placed. We then just have a simple character move to point action that moves the guy to a player start that I've defined in the scene. And in this character move to point action, we have is player checked. But because we're using player switching, we now have this additional player field that allows us to choose exactly which player we're going to control. By default, this is set to active player, but we can change it to affect a specific character that's defined in the settings manager. And this new field will appear in all AC actions that have an is player field. It's also typical of this kind of game that we're going to want to allow the player to interact with another character that isn't currently active. So for example, when we're the girl, we'd like to be able to talk to the guy as though he's a regular NPC. I've created a conversation already called GuyConv here, and we've got three dialogue options. Hi there, who are you? And I've got to go. And I've also made a guy talk to action list that will make use of that conversation and throw out some speech lines. So first of all, we have the guy face the player and then we run the conversation action. Uh, override options is checked so that all the options are handled in this same action list. Uh, we have a few speech lines between the girl and the guy. Um, it doesn't really matter what these are. But I do want to point out that when we choose the first option, it turns on the second. So if I go to my guy conv, I've got who are you and is enabled is unchecked. So it won't appear when we first run the conversation. In fact, we can quickly test this just by running this manually from within the inspector. So if I run the scene, 
I'll click on Run Now, and we've got Hi there, I've got to go, so I'll choose Hi there. Uh, we then get this second option, and finally I can click on the third to end the conversation. But right now I can't actually run this by clicking on the NPC, so let's change that now. Um, I'll go to the Guy Player Prefab. So I'm going to add the Hotspot component to make him interactive, and you can see he's already got a Capsule Collider to go along with it. Um, now because this is a prefab and he's going to be appearing in different scenes, I'm not going to use a local action list. Instead I'm going to use an asset file. So my interaction source is going to be asset file. I'll create a new use interaction. I'll set the cursor icon to talk to and I'll drag in the guy talk to asset that I made earlier. Um, I think I'll also check the player action to turn to face. And finally, if I just go up a little bit further to the player component, you can see we've got this new auto sync hotspot state option, and this is checked by default. And all this option means is that when we are currently controlling this character, his hotspot will be turned off, meaning he can only be interacted with when he's not the active player. So let's come out of prefab mode now and test the scene again. And you can see I can now click on the guy to run this conversation. And if I become the guy, he's no longer interactive himself. But we now have an issue whereby we can go to the other scene. And in fact, let's do that now. We'll have the girl and the guy come through. If I now click on the guy, the conversation doesn't run. And that's because our guy conv is no longer in the scene. So let's look at that now. So back in scene B, we've got this guy conv object. And what we could do is make this a prefab and then have an instance of it in both scenes. So let's just try that now. Um, I've got this remember conversation component that's been automatically attached. I'll check retain in prefab and then when I make a prefab out of it, it has the same ID number. And this ID number is important because it's how the action list references this conversation. So let's go back to scene A and drop a new instance of GuyConv into it. So let's see what effect that had now. I'll run the scene and go over to scene B. Let's click on the guy and I'll run the first option so that this second option is now showing. I'll end the conversation and go back to scene A, bring the guy character in, and if I now click on him, you can see the conversation is now running. And that's because we have the same guy conv present in this scene as well. But one thing to be aware of is that the second option is no longer visible. And that's because this is a separate instance of our guy conv prefab. And this means that the two guy conv objects are treated separately so far as save data goes. So actually, we don't want to make this a prefab and have an instance of it in both scenes. What we're instead going to do is make use of a new feature of AC and have it so that it's not part of any scene at all. I'll remove it from scene A and go back to scene B. And then selecting this guy conv, what we're going to do is make this guy conv, which is in scene B, persistent so that it survives scene changes. And we can do that with a simple call of the don't destroy on load command, which is available in Unity's documentation. Um, it's a very simple script and I've already written it. It's called don't destroy me. And if I just select it, um, you can see it's just a single call to don't destroy on load the game object within the start function. So if I now reselect my guy conv and drop in the don't destroy me component, I'll run the scene. And you can see after running the scene, it's now present in the don't destroy on load section of the hierarchy. So let's see what effect that made. 
um, I can click on the guy and run the first conversation option to show the second. Exit, and I'll go to scene A. And you can see this guy conv is still present in this section of the hierarchy. So when I click on the guy now in scene A, it's running this same persistent instance of that guy conv. And so the second option is still shown. And the state of this conversation will also be stored in save game files because AC will now look for any remember component present in the don't destroy on load section when recording save game files. So that's about it so far as this video goes. Um, again, it wasn't really a tutorial so much as a, um, a demonstration of the new workflow. Thanks for watching.